So I want to keep people out of my tycoon. In order to do that, I have this owner-only door that lets me through, but anyone else will get utterly annihilated. So if you want to implement this, make sure to watch till the end of this video in order to learn how. Like this video if you enjoy it, subscribe to stay up to date with the Tycoon series, but other than that, let's get right into the video. So let's start by bringing our template back out of server storage, and then we can add our only owner-only door. So I'm going to just make a little part, and this will be my door, and it's going to be like a door an early door of like the original tycoons back in the day when all they were is just a block that has can collide turned off so i'm going to turn can collide off and <clears throat> it's going to be like semi transparent i'm also going to make it a red color with neon make it a little more transparent 0.7 there you go so this is my door it's very simple very minimalistic you can actually add like other stuff to it but this door is just going to kill players who aren't the owner if they try to walk in and just allow the owner to walk in if you want to make a door with actual like door functionality you could definitely do that pretty easily by just editing the code so this acts as a zone that players can like walk through and like actually opens or close the door. But this is probably the most effective owner only door. So <clears throat> I'm going to start by making this unlockable. So checking the unlockable box. I'm also going to add a tag. I'm going to call this kill. Oh, let me rename this so it actually looks good. So kill. And the reason I'm not making an owner only door tag is because this will actually be a pretty generic component. Because what if you want an electric fence that kills anyone that's not the owner? You could add this kill tag, and when it detects anyone that's not the owner, it'll just kill them. And so let me go back into the attributes tag side of our owner only door, and I'm going to add a string, and it's going to be the unlock ID. And I'm going to set this to owner only door. And then I'm going to go and just copy a button. So I'm going to copy this test button here. And we are going to move it over here. I'm going to name this door button. And then I'm going to set the cost to zero for now. The display is going to be owner only door and the ID is going to be the same as our unlock ID which is owner only door with no spaces. So make sure your ID of your button matches the unlock ID of your door. So now I'm going to drag the door into my template. I'm just going to name this owner only door. You can name it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. And that's about it for the basic setup. So let's take this, take our template, drag it in. Actually, first of all, one thing I forgot to do when I made this was make it anchored. So I'm going to make the owner only door anchored. And that should be everything we need. So I'm going to take it, drag it into the server storage. And then I'm going to start with the scripts. So let's go into server script service, go to components, and create a new component, our module script. And we're going to name this kill. And we're going to do the basic oop setup. Okay, so what we want this kill script to do is detect when a player touches the door and determine whether they're not the owner, and if they're not, we kill them. And this is like basically just like a kill script, just with a little more logic. 
So I'm going to first make a function. This will be called function kill on touched. It'll take in the hit hit part, the part that it's gets touched by. And first of all, I'm going to get a reference to the owner, like the owner of the tycoon, which will be self.tycoon.owner. So we just need that, and we just want to save it in a little variable. And then we want to say local character equals hit find first ancestor, which is a model. So this will basically look, whoops, this will look through all the ancestors of the hit part because a character in Roblox is made up of a bunch of parts, but they have one common trait. They are part of a model, and the model is a player's character, and we can verify that by checking if one of the model's children is a humanoid. So we first need to check if there's a model, and this just basically looks through each parent of the part and sees if it's a model, and if it is, it gets it. And then we want to check if there's a humanoid. So we can say local humanoid equals character and character find first child humanoid. So what this does is it takes the humanoid, or it takes the character, makes sure the character exists by saying character and. So this and basically checks if there's a character, we call character find first child humanoid. If there's not a character, we just return nil, basically. So if there's no character, humanoid will be nil. If there is a character, then we'll make sure there's humanoid. So this makes sure there's a model and also makes sure the model has a humanoid so we know it's a character. So then all we have to do is say if humanoid and character is not equal to so like the little tilde plus the equal the owner dot character then we want to damage the humanoid. So I'm just gonna say humanoid take damage hundred. So keep in mind the take damage function takes into account if the player has a force field. So in reality, if you want this owner only door to work for all players, regardless of if they have a force field or not, you'd be better off just saying humanoid.health equals zero. But for my purposes, I think take damage is fine because really a player shouldn't have a force field when they shouldn't need it. So all this code does is we check if the human exists because as we as I said earlier, it may or may not exist, and the character may or may, may or may not exist. And then we also check if there's a character it's not equal to the owner dot character because you don't want the owner dying. So now let's hook up this onTouched function to the actual door. So I'm just gonna say self dot instance dot touched connect function with ellipses and then I'm going to say self on touched and send in the ellipses into the rest of the kill. So this should work fine. In reality, if you want to make this component even more customizable, you could change this a hundred to a attribute on each kill component. But for my purposes, that won't be needed. So let's hit play. You can see we can buy our only owner only door and it's here. That's cool. And you can see I can run through it just fine. Let me just wait for the force field to wear off. I can run through it just fine. But if I were to go into a multiplayer playtest, so let's go to local server or test, and then we can start a local server with two players. Go Windows Defender, keeping me safe, but I don't really care because I'm in Roblox. So we have a or two players. Let's go to our other player. And this guy bought the own, owner only door, so if I walk through it, <coughs> I die. It's exactly what we want. So that's pretty cool. Works like a charm. So keep in mind that this owner only door doesn't have to be a door. You can literally put it on anything you want, like any kill brick that you want to only affect people other than the owner. And that's the cool thing about using components. You can take very like niche concepts like an owner-only door and you can apply it to very general scenarios 
with the click of a button in your Tag Editor plugin. Now, of course, in my specific setup, adding this door just on its own is kind of useless since we have no walls. So just real quickly, I'm going to add some basic walls. And you can just see what I do, like my workflow for doing this. So first, I'm going to take this button. I'm just going to use Control-D to duplicate it. Move it over here. And I'll call this the wall button. And just feel free to change the prices of any of these buttons. I'm just leaving them for zero just for testing purposes. And I'm just going to say the display to walls and the ID to walls one or something. And then I can just make some walls. So I'm going to just create a part. Make sure this part is anchored. You can collide, whatever. And then I'm just going to make it metal gray. I'm going to move it about here. And I'm not going to make sure this is perfectly accurate. I'm just getting something done. There you go. That should be good. And I'm just going to duplicate this to the other side. My own early door isn't even centered. That's kind of annoying, but whatever. And then I'm going to, first of all, group these using Control G into a model. This model will be named Walls. I'm just going to name it Walls 1 just to keep our naming convention good. I'm going to move these walls, this wall over to the other side. And finish off. Okay, so this is my really ugly looking walls, but it's done. Let's bring the walls into the template, give it an unlockable tag, set the unlock ID attribute to unlock ID, or to, that was stupid, to walls one, and this should work out of the box. Let's shove the template back into server storage, hit play, and see what happens. So, walls. Boom. Own only door. Boom. So now you can't can't get past you can jump over the wall, but that's what a roof's for. But I assume you can add a roof on your own if you really want to. So that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed making a very simple own your own owner only door for the tycoon. If you have any other suggestions on what to do in the series, make sure to comment them below because I'm happy to continue making little videos on just different components that you can add and what you want to do. So like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. But other than that, I hope you have a nice day, and goodbye.